Hi guys, welcome to the 9.3 histograms and box plots video. Let's start out with histograms. So histograms are vertical graphs that are used to represent the frequencies of certain ranges or intervals. So you can see underneath on the x-axis you've got 40 through 100. That whole bar for where it starts at 40 is for the range between 40 and 50. So the grade between 40% and 50% is approximately, I would say like 13 people. So 13 people got between a 40 and a 50%. And then for between 50 and 60%, that would be approximately like 21 people or 22 people. And then between 60% and 70%, that would be approximately 34 people. And this would be approximately 42 people that got between a 70 and an 80 and then between 80 and 90 would be approximately 38%. And then the last one would be from 90 to 100 would be approximately 25 people. So that's how you are able to read a histogram. All right, so for box plots, we also call those box and whisker plots. That's a diagram that's used, um, it's using a number line to break the data into 25% groups. So quartiles are four groups of 25%. So essentially that means that from here to here, that's 25%. From here to here, that's another 25%. Wait, let me make that a little better. So that's another 25%. And then from here to here is another 25%. And then we've got our last 25% here. So at each quartile, you kind of are the end. So the lower quartile, where you can see on the left hand side right here, that's quartile one. So that's kind of from this section to here is quartile one. And then the upper quartile is quartile three. So that's essentially meaning from here to this is quartile three. And then in the middle, that's quartile two. So from quartile one up to the median, that's quartile two. And then quartile four would be from the upper quartile to the maximum value. So it's all broken up into fourths. So whenever they say to you, um, what is the lowest 50%, you know, is under what number? So on this situation, when you're looking here, the 50% would be from the median to the minimum value. So that would mean anything from 50 below. And then 75% would be from the upper quartile to the minimum value and so on. So you break it into fourths of 25%. So it identifies the minimum, the maximum, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the median. So box plots are a great resource to be able to identify a few things. However, they are limited in the fact that you're not going to get detailed data. So you're not gonna be able to say what were the individual points that were in the data values when you first started. So you're not gonna be able to get the range of numbers that are included here you're just gonna be able to identify those things that I just mentioned, the minimum, the maximum, the lower quartile, upper quartile, and median. And box plots are great resources to use when you're trying to say, you know, 25% of the group is between what number and so on. So that's a great resource for that. However, it's limited as far as being detailed when you're trying to figure out like the mean, for example, you can identify the mean when you're looking at a box and whisker plot. All right, so for this one, we have to estimate the mean from the histogram. So the histogram shows the 2012 Olympic results for women's weightlifting. So you can see that there's ranges between each one, 160 to 179, 180 to 199, and so on. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the midpoint and multiply by the fre frequency. So the midpoint is somewhere, is the middle of that range. So 160, minus or to 179 we have to find where the middle of that number is essentially what's what's the median then we're going to multiply the frequency though so that's how tall the each column goes to or each bar and then we're going to be able to find the mean after we get all of those and divide by how many there are so for this one first one we take the range between 160 and 179 divided by two and the bar only goes up to one, so we multiply it by one. So that equals 169.5. Then we go to the second one, that's a range between 180 and 199. Divide that by two after you add it, 
and that bar goes up to the frequency of 2. So 189.5 times 2 gives us 379. And then you just keep going, 200 to 219, frequency is 4, 838. 220 to 239 divided by 2, frequency is 9, multiply by 9 equals 2065.5. And then 240 plus 259 is the next range in the last one. That only goes up to 1. Multiplied by 1 just keeps it the same, 249.5. Now in order to find the mean, you have to add them up and divide by how many there are. So first, the frequency, how many are there? Well, we would have to add up 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 plus 1 is 17. Then we add up the answers, and you get 3,701.5. So now we just take the mean of that. So 3,701.5 divided by 17 will give us the estimated mean for this histogram, which is 217.7. So this question is asking you to find the estimated mean, but you have to keep it in the, in the context of the problem. So this is talking about the Olympic results for weightlifting. So that means the estimated mean is approximately 217.7 kilograms. And that would be the answer. All right, so in this section, it's asking us to create a box plot. So first you need to make a number line. And I don't like to number my uh, number line until I actually calculate the data. So the first thing you always wanna start with is the median. So we're gonna need to put these in order from least to greatest, making sure that we have all of the numbers. I like to cross them out to make sure I have all of them. And then what an easier way to do the median is actually count how many numbers you have and find the number that's in the middle of that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 numbers. And halfway in between would be five, but remember you want to have it equal on both sides. So the median would be, oops, I'm showing you too much first. So the median would be the 25s that are in the middle because there's four on the left of the 25 and there's four on the right of the 25. So when there's two in the middle, in this situation, it's kind of easy because they're the same number. But when there are two in the middle, you just add the two together and divide by two, and that would be the median. So the median's 25. So on our number line, we're going to put the median in the middle, and then I'm going to label that 25. So then we have to find quartile one and quartile three. So quartile one, remember, is the left side of our median. So the left side of our median is... Um, 16 and the right hand side is actually 27 okay I mean 26 so you can see the orange boxes in the background so because our median was actually two numbers that were um, added and divided into two right here is actually our median we are including those 25s in the quartile 1 and quartile 3 which I made the mistake of not including them. So make sure that you do. And when you do that, there's five numbers to the left of the median, there's five numbers to the right of the median. So quartile one would be 16, because that's the one in the middle. And quartile three would have 26, and that's the one in the middle on that side. So then you're going to make up and down lines at 26 and 16. And that is your interquartile. So you just close that box up. So you put a top on it and a bottom on it. And then in order to find the whiskers, which are the outside tails, you do the range, which is your lowest number to your highest number. So the lowest number, if you look in the original from least to greatest was 15 and the highest was 28. And that is your box plot. So you can see the tail is a little bit longer or the whisker is a little bit longer on the right hand side and we have a shifted median. Our median's shifted to the right, which means it's skewed to the left. So our data is definitely a little bit skewed and it's not symmetric. For the second one, we want to put that in order from least to greatest again. Oh, by the way, if you notice the, or the box plot above kind of got cleaned up a little bit. So I kind of clean up my box plots at the end because it's a little bit difficult to create a number line unless the number line is given to you. So you can just make it fit the box plot when you're done. So we're gonna put these in order on the bottom from least to greatest. Make sure that we have exactly the same number of problems 
our number of data values as when uh, we put them in order from least to greatest. Then you're going to find the median, which is 2. And we're going to make a line above 2. Then you're going to find the median of the quartile 1, which there's 2 in the middle. So we add 2 plus 2 and divide by 2. There's also 2 in the middle for the right-hand side, and that would be 3 plus 4 divided by 2. So our quartile 1 is 2, and our quartile 3 is 3.5. So we put lines above 3.5 and above 2. Now you'll notice our median and our quartile 1 share the same line. So I just put a red line through that so that you can see there was a black line and then a red line on top of it. So our median is not going to be as distinct as the first one we did, where you can actually see the line. This one is going to have the median be the same, time, same thing as quartile 1. So then we have to do close the box and make our whiskers. So remember our whiskers is the lowest number, which is 1, and the highest number, which is 6. And then you just draw the line in the center, connecting the lines, and there's our box and whisker plot for that one. So you can see because our median is shifted to the left, that means it's skewed to the right. And so we have a longer whisker as well on the right-hand side, which means probably one of those numbers is an outlier. But again, we don't want to automatically assume that's an outlier. We want to do the outlier formula and calculate if 6 is actually an outlier. And that is how you do these two box plots. All right, for this part, we're going to create a histogram. Listed are the ages of the first 44 U.S. presidents on the date of their first inauguration. So it's not important that you put them in order from least to greatest. That would be a little bit crazy. So what you're going to do is just use like color coding or you can use like colored pencils or something and identify ranges of, and of numbers. So first we want to also identify the Y and X axis and label our graph. So we're going to label this side frequency and this side ages. And we're just going to go through and circle ranges of numbers. So a good range because I can see that the most of the answers or most of the numbers are between, you know, 40 and 60. I could probably go by fives. Um, and it also can change when you start doing the data and you're like, no, I want to do a range of 10 instead. But this looks like it probably could do a range of five and be okay. So first I'm going to label 0 to 20 because I know that there's not more than 20 people or 20 frequencies in each age group. So if I go by groups of 5, I'm going to circle the lowest numbers first, which is 43 to oop, 43 and 42, which is just in between 40 and 45. So, or 41 and 45. And then you would um, mark it up to two on the frequency because there's only two presidents during that uh, you know range of ages. And then we're going to go to the next group. So we have 46 to 50. And there's quite a few of those. So count those all up. And it's a, range, a frequency of eight. And it's not important to fill in the column. You can just do dashes like I'm doing. And then label that 46 to 50. And then we'll do 51 to 55 and circle those. That's the purple. And do 56 to 60, and that's the green. And then there's also two or a few more for orange between 61 and 65. And then last, there's only two for the range of 66 to 70. So you can see we didn't have to put them in order from least to greatest. Just use some kind of color, and you can identify you know, each one individually between the ranges. So this will be able to tell you that most of the presidents in the last 44 presidents were between the ages of 51 to 55. And the least amount of age group was the youngest and the oldest, which is 41 to 45 and 66 to 70. So immediately we're able to see that information by creating this histogram. Go Seahawks!